Good morning, wild ones. I want to show you how to fill a travel palette with watercolor. Um, I love these little travel palettes. Um, this is an Altoids tin small, and then I have a regular size Altoid tin with, um, what I like about these palettes is they come with mixing trays, so it fills it all the way up with a mixing tray, two of those, and then the palette is below. Um, and I'll show you the colors in a second. Uh, these are so fun. So this is the Cadmium Red from Dan Smith. I don't know if it's... Um, I inherited some of these from actually a Ann sister, a, a painter we lost a few years ago, um, and I'm very thankful that they thought to share them with me. How I wanna do it is just do it as tightly as possible. I'm putting the lid all the way down into the, the hole, and then just slowly, I'm almost not even squeezing, I'm just letting gravity take it I might have given it like one good shove but then letting gravity and the other thing how gravity can also help is I tap that to try to get it to even out in the little pot um, and I'm seeing that it's doing what I'm asking it to do which is even out and as it dries, it will pull away from the sides a little bit. That's totally fine. And when you're re-wetting, I tend to re-wet with a mister. And then at the very end of the painting session, especially if I'm in a tropical climate, I have a little tiny mister of rubbing alcohol. I mist my palette with rubbing alcohol. Try to leave it open to dry if possible. If not possible, I shut it. And then I, in the evening, once I've kind of done working, done traveling and playing for the day, I'll open it up and let it dry out fully. If I get any sort of whiff, they will mold in tropical climates. And we live in the Northwest, there's a lot of moisture in the air. Um, they will mold if you leave it in a closed environment, very, very wet. So I'll hit it with one more thing of alcohol. Not a huge deal, especially if you're like in the desert, if you're in, uh, Arizona or somewhere where it's not super moist, you're not going to need to worry about it. But being a Northwesterner, I'm strongly aware of the fact that it's pretty, pretty damp here. <laughs> and um, I love to travel to places like Hawaii, which are also insanely damp. So I just don't want a moldy palette. Nothing good comes from that. Um, but I love having lots of little palettes to just pack in every bag. Like every go bag I have usually has a watercolor palette in it. Um, I'm gonna get back to work and I'll show you the final result once they're done. So I, when I'm picking out for a travel palette, a lot of the times I like to put everything in rainbow order and I know I'm gonna want Quinn Gold um, I'm going to want at least two reds. I usually don't actually grab any orange or green. Um, I would rather have one Indian Throne for sure. So those are my two that I just love to have. And I'm going to want my kind of coolest, lightest yellow. And maybe a phthalo. A phthalo that's red shade and let's go with cad red so that's one two three four five so I need two more um, sepia is always nice um, sepia or indigo I guess you could choose one or the other maybe I'll do indigo for the little palette so one two three four five six and maybe another red so I've kind of got two yellows two blues 
a neutral or maybe that's what I should do is do a gouache white. I tend to like having a gouache in my palette now. So I'm going to I'm going to leave one hole open for gouache because I didn't bring my gouache with me. So here is my filled palette of paint. I'm making my palette swatches. I'll put one of these on top of my piece and I might I I made two just because I messed up one. So I might keep one in my studio just so that I always have kind of which swatches which. Um, and so next I'm going into phthalo blue um, red shade. And I don't like to swatch from my brand new palette because I, I like, like it to look pretty. Um, so I just pull the lid off of the the color. There's usually enough watercolor in the lid for this tiny little swatch. So I'll show you. Just put my wet brush into the lid and then I'm gonna swatch out this next color. I like it to be pretty dark and fill a space. This is where I messed up. So this is going to be a big swatch. This will be the one that doesn't go on the lid. And then because I am a consummate not waster of paint. This is just some poster board. I just wanted to put some color on. So I'm just using whatever is left in my brush with some water to make some just um, scruffily paper. I'm just doing a project that I needed some paper that had a little bit of interest on it. After these are dried, I'll go in and write the color name um, on on top of that color or right next to that color. Uh, I find I like to name my palettes too. So I have a Maui palette for when I was going to Maui. Um, these probably, one of them would be called Hood Canal Palette. And I was thinking of calling one Rosemary because there's a beautiful rosemary bush up here. And I tend to like to name them where I create them for or where I create them so that I always have this like nice, beautiful reminder of my travels. If you enjoyed today's video if you liked it please subscribe comment and tell a friend um there's the view there's the painting had a great conversation with my friend and we're gonna go get in that water so wild ones have an incredible time creating and cheers